Hey everyone, we've got another heart. This is number 1705 in our collection and the heart would have sat roughly in the chest like this. Anterior surface coming out towards the screen, posterior surface towards the turntable, head or superior here, legs or inferior here, left over here and right over here. But let's, what we do, let's do what we usually do, which is start off by identifying what at least externally appears to be the right atrial appendage. And here we've got an atrial appendage that looks triangular, broad-based, or pyramidal. So let's go ahead and open up the heart there. And when we do that, we do find that there are pectinate muscles that spill outside the confines of the appendage. You can see it at the tip of the probe here. All consistent with a morphologic right atrium. And immediately see that there is an atrial septal defect within the confines of the oval fossa. It's hard to miss the oval fossa here, and here are the fenestrated atrial septal defects. And then we also see that there is, in fact, the mouth of the coronary sinus here. Here is the tendon of Totoro. And whenever we find the coronary sinus, the tendon of Totoro, and the right-sided atrioventricular groove, that forms the triangle of cock. And if we were to outline the triangle of cock here, which is bounded by the coronary sinus, the tendon of Totoro, and the right-sided atrioventricular groove, at its apex, at that triangle of cock, is where we would expect the atrioventricular node to sit. So we would expect in this heart the atrioventricular node to be somewhere right here. But when we look at this right atrioventricular junction, we immediately see that the valve associated with it is actually quite abnormal. In fact, even though this is the right-sided atrioventricular junction, we see that the hinge point of the valve leaflets is actually quite abnormal and much lower. Some people will call this inferior displacement of the valve. However, that is an inaccurate term as inferior would be here. And for the the right-sided or tricuspid valve in this case to be inferior displaced, it would have to leave the heart. So this in fact is a heart with Epstein malformation and the better way to describe this is abnormal rotation of the tricuspid valve about the aortic root. Remember the aortic root is going to be the central structure of the heart here and the tricuspid valve does sit around it. And here you can see its hinge point to the aortic root would be somewhere here. And this is abnormal rotation of the tricuspid valve around that point. The three leaflets are roughly here, here, and here. And there are septal connections of this tricuspid valve, all morphologically consistent with a tricuspid valve. Here is the anterior leaflet. This is the most easiest to recognize. You can see the leaflet edges are somewhat thickened and rolled. It isn't entirely excavated from underneath. And same thing with its other aspect here. However, the septal leaflet and the inferior leaflet are actually not very well excavated from the underlying myocardium. So here's myocardium and here's actually valve leaflet here and it's pretty much adhered to that myocardium. And you can see that the the leaflet edges are roughly right here, which means that everything from here, which is the right-sided atrioventricular groove, to here is actually atrialized component of the right ventricle. So this is what we would call atrialization of the right ventricle in the setting of Epstein's malformation. So once again, we see that the septal leaflets and the inferior leaflets are not well excavated from the underlying myocardium. The anterior leaflet is quite thickened and rolled and also is improperly excavated. And that the leaflet edges, instead of being at roughly the level of the right-sided atrioventricular junction, are actually rotated and abnormally located. And thus, there's atrialization of a significant portion of the right ventricle. Now, when we look at the right ventricular outflow tract here, and here is the septomarginal trabeculation here. We do find that there is a ventricular septal defect. It does not live within the Y of the septal band, aka between the cranial and the caudal limbs of the septomarginal trabeculation. It does live 
close to the tricuspid valve here. And this is in fact a central perimembranous ventricular septal defect. So, so far we do have an atrial septal defect, Epstein malformation, and then the central perimembranous ventricular septal defect. Now, when we take a look at this right ventricular outflow tract some more, we find an arterial valve here, which has three leaflets. One, two, three. There are no coronary arteries that arise from its sinuses, all consistent with a morphologic pulmonary valve. Right. Sorry, this keeps closing. And I want to make a point that the arterial valves or the semilunar valves don't truly have a round or oval-shaped annulus. Their annulus is actually crown-shaped because the fibrous leaflets actually have myocardial triangles in between them. So here's a pulmonary valve with three leaflets and three sinuses. Now, if we fill up this heart over, here's a posterior surface. Here is the other atrium. It's smooth walled, does not have pectinate muscles that spill outside of outside the confines of the appendage. And here's the appendage in my hand right here. So this is the left atrial appendage, and this is the left atrium. And we can see the atrial septal defect now from the left side as well. Here's the left side at atrioventricular junction, and it is guarded by a two leaflet atrioventricular valve which does not have connections to the ventricular septum, consistent with a morphologic mitral valve. And I want to make the point that the, a, that the atrioventricular valves do have a round or oval-shaped annulus, unlike the arterial or semilunar valves. The ventricle that this valve opens up into, does have fine crisscross trabeculations consistent with the morphologic left ventricle. Here now we once again see that ventricular septal defect, the central perimembranous defect, and we do now appreciate that part of the tricuspid valve is actually prolapsing through this ventricular septal defect. And then as we course up the left ventricular outflow tract, we come across another arterial valve with three leaflets as well, one, two, and three, and three sinuses. And we can see coronary arteries arising from within the sinuses, consistent with the morphologic aortic valve. Here is the anterior leaflets of the mitral valve, which does seem to have some fibrous continuity with the aortic valve here. Remember, the aortic valve will often have some fiber support, while the pulmonary trunk will be completely supported by muscle. And then here is the ascending aorta, then here is the transverse aorta, and then in my hand is the descending aorta here. So we do have a heart here that has Epstein's malformation. There is a atrial septal defect. We can see a dysplastic anterior leaflet, and then a septal leaflet and inferior leaflet of the tricuspid valve, which are not well excavated from the underlying myocardium, whose leaflet edges are in an abnormal location. Let's not call them inferior displaced. They're abnormally rotated. And as a result, there is atrialization of the right ventricle, and there is a central perimembranous ventricular septal defect.